first of all, the study just talked to residents. We had done a previous study with a, a lot of non-residents, and that was more tourism related to, to bicycling. But this particular one was asking residents a number of questions mm -hmm. about if they participate in bicycling and what type of bicycling they do participate in, when they bicycle, and then a couple of questions related to their familiarity with the bicycling laws, because we hear that that could be an issue, and how safe they feel when they're biking on Montana highways. So it, it was, you might say obvious, but maybe it isn't quite obvious to everybody. <laughs> All right, let, let's talk about some of those aspects, and, and sure. let's talk about safety for one thing. Do people feel safe on Montana roads while they're bicycling? You know, they don't. 13% said somewhat or very safe of the people, and this is of all Montanans, right? We intercepted over 8,000 people in January, February, and March asking them these questions. So you didn't have to be a bicyclist, but how safe is bicycling? They don't perceive it to be very safe. And then after that, they, numerous people on the survey would tell our surveyors uh, just comments related to, I would never go on those highways. The shoulders are too narrow. The people are going too fast, motorists, and so on. And so they generally don't. Okay. So uh, let's talk about money now. I mean, I realize that bicycling uh, just here in the state, uh, does it generate a lot of income? Well, if you add up, and I, we didn't ask them how much money they spent on bicycling, so I don't have actual numbers here, but when you add up the cost of a bicycle, if you're using it for more than just riding around your block, you're probably going to buy one that's, you know, in the hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth. And then if you have to have it tuned up every year, and then if you had to buy a rack to put it on your car to take your bike where you want to go biking, we're talking money. And then, of course, tires pop. Tires wear out, so they're constantly putting new hardware, and if you want to call it software, is it? as a tire on there's a lot of money that goes into it and those who ride more spend more because they have to sure now let's talk i understand it part of the study and part of the news release talks about headlines by uh, cnn the economist and others re referring to bicycling as the new golf yeah that that is really interesting you can google bicycling as the new golf and all these articles will pop up and they're actually I find them rather funny to read because one of them talks about how these business associates are going out with a client and they're wanting to talk about, and they're not on the golf course anymore, they're biking. And the, and the client is huffing and puffing and, they, you know, and they're, that's how they're conducting their business because what I'm reading is that the, the younger business entrepreneurs don't want to slowly walk along a golf course or even, heaven forbid, sit in a golf cart, they want to do something active because their lives are so busy. This is their chance of getting some exercise in and conducting business at the same time. All right. Now, now, uh, who paid for this report? Obviously, reports aren't free. So uh, was there any particular organization or group that funded this, this study? No. Actually, we are constantly surveying non-residents out around the state of Montana. And especially in the winter months, there's not as many non-residents here. So we get our surveyors to ask residents because we intercept them at gas stations and uh, rest areas. And so we have residents always coming and filling up their car with gas. So we're able to ask the residents these questions. So the funding is not by any particular organization. The... Um, way the Institute is funded is a small portion of the bed tax dollars, and we conduct these types of surveys as approved by the Tourism Advisory Council, which is an organization or not an or a committee that's appointed by the governor. And bicycling is becoming one of those activities that more and more people are interested in exploring. Wonderful. Well, that's why we kind of did this. Just what I needed. That's perfect. Thank you. All right. Awesome. No. Thanks, Norma. I hope it gets us some comments. Because I'll Keep going here. Okay, Norma, I understand that, that uh, sometimes uh, there are two groups when it comes to bicycling, and do ever the twain meet? <laughs> yeah, our surveyors out in the field would tell us how 
There are the strong people who just hate the bicyclists. They don't want them on the road, and they just, you know, get irritated every time they see a bicyclist on the road. And then there's the bicyclists who get irritated by the motorists who are not paying attention to the fact that they're on the road and, you know, you could hurt me type thing. And do the do the two meet? Well, obviously they meet on the roadways, and there needs to be, and that's why one of the questions in the survey was related to knowing the bicycle laws, and they really don't know the bicycle laws, both the bicyclists and the people who don't bicycle, and it shows up in their uh, emotions of interacting with a motorist or a bicyclist, depending on what type of vehicle, if you will, that they're on. So there needs to be some education in, in the bicycle world out there in terms of how bicycles are supposed to be treated on the road and then how bicyclists are supposed to treat the motorists. It goes both ways.